Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Fowley, and due to the glories of technical difficulties, some things will be written on this one, but that'll be all right. We're going to learn how to balance nuclear reactions. We are going to learn what nuclear reactions are. We're going to learn what alpha, beta, gamma, electron capture, and positron emission are, besides scary. And we're going to talk about what the band of stability. So let's hop right to it. Two conditions must be met to balance a nuclear equation. By the way, these are nuclear equations. You must con have conservation of the mass number. That's the top number and conservation of the nuclear charge, which is the atomic number, which is the bottom numbers. So if you notice here, 232, I guess you can erase this one, 232 equals 232 equals 228 plus 4. Hey, look, this side equals this side. And on the bottom, 90 equals 88 plus 2. Isn't that nifty? I think it is. And then we've got the same thing on the other side. 231, 231 plus, oh, zero. And we've got 90 uh, is 91 minus 1. You can have a negative 1 there. Yeah, that's a beta particle. You're going to learn about those in a little bit. Now this one, oh, I've got two particles over here, which would be 242 for the top. And over here I have 239. Now how does this plus 239 equal 242? Oh, I have three neutrons that have a mass of 1. So that means 239, whoa, plus 3 equals 242. And on the bottom, 94 plus 3 times 0, so 94. So there you go. Alpha decay. An alpha particle is a helium nucleus, which means it has a mass of 4, 2 protons. It does have a 2 plus charge um, because it doesn't have the electrons. It is big, heavy, and positive. Your skin can block it. So if someone is shooting alpha particles at you, your skin can block it. So what do you do if you're trying to attack someone with alpha particles? You shoot them in the eyes right in the pupils. Hopefully their pupils are that big. Or you shoot them in their nares, the little holes in their nose, or in their gaping maw of a mouth. Okay? So, anyway. Um, 209.84 polonium undergoes alpha decay. So 209.84 is polonium. And if it undergoes alpha decay, that means the alpha particle, which can look like this, or it can look like this, or it can just be 4,2-HE, or it can just be alpha. Any of these is an OK way to do it. I'll do this so you get used to it. Um, so that means I know my top number has to equal 209. So 205 plus 4 equals 209. And I know this has to equal 84, so 2 plus 82. And you look at your periodic table, and the thing with the atomic number of 82 is lead, I do believe. It is. So there you go. Beta decay, that's the symbol for beta. Sometimes you see beta with a negative charge on there. Beta emission, 0, negative 1, E, negative. I suppose it's probably going to be A radioactive nucleus that undergoes beta emission has a neutron. Remember, neutrons have no charge. Convert into a proton. Remember, protons have roughly the same mass. And an electron. Okay? So a neutron turns into a proton electron. Oh, look, the charges cancel. And then it spits out the electron. <laughs> and that's what happens. For example, tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, undergoes beta decay. Um, oh, I just should say this first. Um, beta is higher energy, but it can still be blocked by a sheet of plastic or metal, or wood, for that matter. So tritium, remember before we showed tritium was 3 over 1, um, undergoes beta decay. So if it's decay, it's going to be a product. So that means the mass number so has to equal 3, so it's still going to weigh 3. And this is going to be negative 1. So something minus 1 equals 1, so that would be 2. So I have and number 2, when you look at the periodic table, is helium. Gamma emission, which I would show gamma as 0, gamma with 0, 0. The nucleus is too high of energy and just releases energy. Energy is massless, so it is gamma. Okay? Oh, so gamma is also massless, because it's just energy. So it's not much of a change for our purposes. It's chargeless and high energy. It takes feet of lead to block it. So what does it do? I think of it as sitting at the happy little Thanksgiving table, mm, shoveling food in. And then your stomach gets incredibly large. And Uncle Ed decides, oh, and just let, lets out a belch. Now, it's not much of a difference in Uncle Ed. He's still, you know, 60 pounds overweight. But that belch just releases the energy, and he feels much, much better. And everyone else thinks he's rude and can't wait for Uncle Ed to leave. Cerium-141. Uh-oh. 
It undergoes gamma radiation. Well, I don't know what the bottom number of cerium is. So I'm going to look at my periodic table, and I really don't know what the bottom number of cerium is or where cerium is. Oh, cerium is number 58. And if it undergoes gamma radiation, it's going to be 0, 0, gamma. And what do I get? I get a happier Uncle Ed or a happier cerium. And that's it. Positron emission. A positron looks like 0 plus 1e. E. Sometimes you show it as a beta positive. Positron emission has a proton in its nucleus, convert into a neutron and a positron, and then ejects that positron. So that positron is like an anti-electron. Okay? It is an anti-electron. It has the same mass, but it has a positive one charge instead of a negative one charge. So barium-124 undergoes positron decay. So 124 over 56 barium undergoes positron decay. 0, positive 1, E. So the mass is going to stay the same because I'm adding 0. And my number of protons is going to go from, it's going to go to 55, because 55 plus 1 is 56. I look at my periodic table and see that number 55 is what the guards do to escape prisoners. They cesium. <laughs> electron capture. Notice how this looks like a beta particle. Nucleus absorbs an electron in the lowest quantum level, changing a proton into a neutron. So again, notice I've got a proton plus an electron, and what happens? you get a neutron. So it grabs onto this guy and mushes them together. 82 over 37 rubidium. Now if it does electron capture, that means it's going to be a reactant. So it's going to be on the left-hand side. So what happens here is 82. Oh, the mass doesn't change. It's still 82. But 37 minus 1 is 36. And number 36 is krypton. The band of stability. Draw this graph. Atoms are stable with the right ratio of protons and neutrons. Atoms do different types of decay to get back on the band of stability. It's not that they want to, but that's just where the stability happens. Okay? So if you have the proper ratio, that means, remember, protons repel each other, and neutrons are kind of like the glue. But if you think of if you're building a popsicle stick tower, and then, oh, what great popsicle sticks I'm drawing. If you use, like, you know, a gallon of Elmer's glue, then what happens is your popsicle sticks don't stick. So you need just the right amount of glue, and any first grader will tell you a little dab will do you. Or is it a drop will do you? I forget which one it is. But um, the easy part where it's a one-to-one -one ratio is 20 protons to 20 neutrons is stable, and then it curves up. I wish this line did not keep going through here, but that one-to-one -one ratio. Notice anything over 83 is radioactive. So 83 and up is always unstable. Always unstable. Okay. Um, and I still put the high neutron to proton ratio. Whoops. Is proton deficient? To convert neutrons to protons, it undergoes beta decay. And I still put the low neutron to proton ratio. Is neutron deficient? It can do two things: positron emission or electron capture. The effect is the same. So, for example, if you're hungry and want to be not hungry anymore, you can eat Oreo cookies or you can eat cheese sticks, and the effect of not being hungry anymore will be the same. Elements of the time number greater than 83 undergo a decay to lower both protons and neutrons, which we call alpha. Well, that's a weird-looking alpha. So if you're bigger than 83, you go alpha. Review, you know all the types of radiation symbol, charge, and birthing method. So that means how do you make an alpha particle, how do you make a beta particle, how do you make an electron uh, electron capture, etc. One to one proton and neutron ratio up to calcium, then it takes more glue. Remember, neutrons are the glue. Over 83 is radioactive, so they are disappearing. Um, where do these disappearing atoms come from? Hmm. If they're disappearing, where do they come from? What a great question. I can't wait to discuss it tomorrow. Toodles.